Well, so your thoughts on today's game? Yeah, I think um, much more like us. I thought some of the play in the first half was excellent. Um, second half, I felt completely in control. Um, probably should have won it by more, you know, maybe 3 0, maybe, but overall, um, really happy. Uh, obviously, the main thing at this stage of the season is just get your, get your name in the draw for the next round. And if you draw a comparison on last season, by this time we were out of both cups and uh, it's different. Uh, we're in, you know, we're in the second round of both the cups. So, from a financial point of view, that's a, that's a, a wee bit of a bonus. We don't, we don't budget for it, so anything we get from now on in is is on budget for and a bonus. Good. And the uh, next round, just the home tie or? Well, there's two ways you look at it. You can go for a, a winnable home tie or you go for a glamour, a glamour away tie and either way suits me fine. Good. I mean, when you think about it, it's been two months now since the heartbreak at Recreation Park, so close. How, how do you feel the club have reacted to the disappointment? Yeah, it's, it's obviously, as you say, it's two months and it doesn't feel like it. Um, and the, the fact is that no matter where we go, Every, everybody mentions it. I mean, even today here, you know, um, uh, uh, Neil Doncaster and Ralph Toppin, they asked me about it. So it's just it's fresh in people's minds. And um, but I think the, I think the players have just completely moved on from it. It's just not even discussed. Uh, and you know, from my point of view, it's still it's sore. It's really really sore. We're so incredibly close and, and on a slightly different day with a wee bit of rubber the green. You know, everything could have been different, but. You know, I think everybody's just got to park it and put it in the memory chest and just move on and say, well, that's, that's just, it's gone, it's history now and it's what we do, it's what we do next Saturday against the early first How do you feel, you've got a couple of new signings brought into the club, how do you feel they've fitted into the club? Yeah, great, absolutely tremendous and they're good lads as well and um, you know, the, the manager always makes sure that first and foremost, the first criteria for anybody coming in is they've got to be the right, the right kind of person and they are, they're, they always fit in really well and you can see that they've, they've, they've fitted in well and we're looking at this really solid at the back and, and you know, obviously Malcolm and Dodgley and there's always going to be a big big gap in, in any any team that missed that, two excellent performers and you know they'll both go and, and do well wherever they are now but um, yeah, the guys that have come in are, are excellent and I think uh, hopefully they'll, they'll go on and just be as equally successful. You, you have quite a small squad just now, more have gone out than, than have come in. Yeah. How hard is, is it for a club like Forfar to, to attract players? Well, it's difficult because of the platform we've built. Um, there are lots of players out there. We've got to make sure the player coming in is going to be better than what's going out. And um, obviously they're expensive players. They've got to, you know, they, they, they can command decent money. So we've got to factor in the fact that we want a really good player, but we've got to be sensible with the finances. Um, but the club's lucky. Um, it has this good reputation. Everybody talks about it, and it's a genuine reputation. It's not. It's not just paper talk, and it isn't just a figure of speech. The club really does have a good reputation, and, and players will come and play for us. And the more good players you get, the more good players you can get, because good players attract good players. So um, yeah, we're hopeful. We've got one or two. We're still. We're still hoping to bring in. You know, there's a. You know, there's still a few weeks yet before the window closes, and. We've got one or two, one or two up our sleeve, and I'm absolutely confident by by the end of August we'll have strengthened again. Yeah, they, they, without giving any names, we are the good names. It's uh, names well, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, you know, we're talking to you know, we're talking to maybe two, three different players, and some of them are at, you know, SPL clubs, and some of them are are in Championship clubs, and we're just looking to see if we can get them in on loan, and um, I think that's probably our best our best option now. In, in, in comparison to other clubs, what is the wage structure like at Forfar in comparison to other clubs? Are you competing on an equal footing? Or? I think by and large we are. Um, it's difficult when you've got obviously clubs like Dunfermline and, and Air United who can pay, you know, pay more because of, just because of the fan base. They've got their, you know, their big clubs and, and fair play to them. You know, I, have, I have no problem with that. That's just the law of the jungle. And, um, that, we can live with that. So we find ourselves right probably in the middle of where we should be. And, um, you know, our budget now for the last two or three seasons has been bigger than, than ever before, um, and it's just it's got to be like that for us to, to, to be able to compete. But what we're doing off the park with the hospitality, and the player pot, and all of the, all of the work that goes in behind the scenes should make sure it's, it's okay. And, I, and obviously, I run to the quarter final of each of the cup. You mentioned that together everyone achieves more. Yeah. The Loons player pot. Yeah. When I was reading, you were hoping to get 50 to 75 fans involved. Yeah. Have you heard the response you hope for so far? Aye, we have. It's been it's been uh, it's been steady, and uh, it's still early days. And the good thing about the season is even though you know 
will start in August, you can come in in October, you can come in in November, and if by January or February you don't want to do it, you can just, you just drop out. It's, it's purely optional from the fans. So, yeah, I think we're probably, I think by, by the time the first league game comes, we'll not be far away from maybe being halfway to what we really would have wanted. Once people realise that this this can make a huge difference because we're not reliant on this wage, this this money that we can get from the player board is purely as an additional as an additional wage. It's it's not there to fund anything else other than one additional player that we haven't budgeted for. So it's it's a bonus. You know? yeah, that's good. For, for a club like Forth for Athletic, community activity is vital. Well, what more can the Forth for public do in ways to help raise more funds? I think generally speaking, we're really lucky. The support, the community support, absolutely everything we do, no matter what it is, if it's a supporters club. Now, Night, if, it's a, if it's a tribute night in the, in the hospitality lounge, if it's a sportsman's dinner, the ladies' dinner, the town always comes out and supports the club, so we're really fortunate. I think um, the community side of things is going to become really important. Everybody can see the, the way that, that Scottish football is moving now. It's community based, there's this fit fans, and, there's, and you've got to, you know, the, the, the football money that's available to you now, where previously you just got that money, now you've got to qualify for it, and you've got to qualify by doing community led projects. We've got two or three directors, and that's their remit within the club, specifically looking at community projects, and you'll just see it getting stronger and stronger, and it's the way for us to access funds going forward for the club, and um, you know, whether we like it or not, that's just exactly what we have to adopt, adopt our stance. The SPFL has changed quite a bit lately. Everybody knows how I felt about the amalgamation. I felt that we probably sold ourselves a little bit short, and SFL could have negotiated a much stronger deal. But um, over the piece, um, I think it's settling down quite, quite well now. There is a financial imbalance between the championship and the games, a huge step up. that's available in that league is huge. I mean, really, really strong now. So to get up into that league, we were so close, but to get up into that league, it, it changes everything. And the finance is there to restructure the club to, to be a successful championship club. Earlier in the month, four for Athletic News, two new directors to the board, Barry Quinn and Scott Murdy. How have they settled into their new positions? It's early days, and I think from the time I joined the board, I think it takes you two seasons just to get familiar with is to be a director of a football club and um, they're both they're both you know quite young guys and um, they're going to be here for a long time and they've settled in really well they've all got their responsibilities within the club and they've all got their roles and they've and they're, and they're you know so far so good and um, it's a difficult thing it's a huge amount of time they've got to give up um, you just wouldn't believe the amount of time some of these guys are giving up and personal money it's costing them as well so it's early days but I'm, I'm really confident they'll settle in well by appointing them, what do you hope that they will bring to the boardroom that was a good boardroom prior to that? Well, it's it's really now just about, uh, there's much more jobs to do in the club now than there's ever been. You know, the community project for a start, and that's Barry. Barry's role is to get much more involved with the community because of his connections. We've been the, 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 the chairman of Forford Boys Club, he's got good, strong youth connections, and Barry wants to bring that, and he's, he's, a, you know, he's a businessman, so he's got a, a little bit of business acumen that we're looking for, and Scott, again, businessman, um, Scott's getting involved in the commercial side of the business, you know, making sure that every square inch of the ground is sold, uh, and, and they're doing well. The early signs are that they're going to do well. So uh, it's, 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 it's a difficult thing um, finding the right people, and they've got to fit in as well. It's almost like the, you know bringing a new player, and it's got to be the right mm-hmm. person. They've got to fit in. They've got to have the right the right character and the right makeup to be part and parcel of the board because it's a pretty intense situation. So they need to have a sense of humour. <laughs> Finally, in two weeks' time, uh, first home league game of the season, Albion Rovers. Yeah. There's going to be definitely two new changes in the stadium itself, with the dugouts. How how is that going, and what brought that about? Well, the dugouts was a was a, a fortuitous telephone call. Um, I was making a routine call to um, some of the funding organisations, just trying my hand, trying to see if I could be lucky or not projects and they knocked me back on that and just as the call was coming to an end he said I could do something for dugouts if you wanted so I said well absolutely let's have a chat so we, we looked to see if we met the criteria and with all the things that happened off the pitch with the community with 
the connection with the girls' football and the amount of kids that are playing on there. Fortunately, we ticked every single box, so um, the groundwork's all done now um, and the dugouts have arrived. And I would think in the next seven days you'll start to see pictures going on the website and of the new dugouts being in place. And it's just another, it's another enhancement. It's the, it's, it's the external changing rooms we've done. It's the pitch. It's the floodlights. It's the hospitality. Now it's the dugouts. Uh, we're, we're working on the car park. Uh, we've got um, British Gas to fix the, the bit outside the ground. It's much more uh, eye-catching now. It's you know it's not the, the mess that it was, and it's it's going to be improved even more that area. And we hope to be able to do to utilise that for match days as a car parking space. So uh, everything's everything's really good. We just need to make sure we win it win on a Saturday. That's what we need now. Just right on three points. Yeah. Just just one last thing. Uh, I noticed when I was looking at social media that when you were talking about the dugouts, one or two mentioned about about the stand. It would be nice to have something updated on the stand. Uh, have you any plans or ideas as um, regards that? Uh, we, had, we, had draw, we had plans drawn up about six, seven years ago for the stand, and um, it's a significant capital expense, and we would need to um, we would need one one of the board to win the lottery, or um, we would, well, it's going to take a lot of work. You're probably looking at anywhere between three quarters of a million pounds to a million pounds, and obviously that's out of our remit at the moment. But um, who knows? Um, you know, the, the stand definitely has a shelf life. That's for sure. It's a ticking clock. We've just got another certificate for another another ten years on this on the safety of it. So that gives us ten years anyway. But um, yeah, it would be. It's a lot of the, a lot of the board's ambition, and it would be a lifetime ambition for a lot of the guys to eventually do something. So we just need every four for far to do the lottery every Saturday night. Okay. Well, Alistair, thanks for your time. Good. And we wish you all the best for the coming season, and hopefully that this season will end better than last season. Great. Thank thanks you. Very much. Cheers. Thank you.